similar organisms living together. Well, this one's easy because you can imagine prairie dogs, <coughs> prairie dog colony. Because they very suitably, handily live together in something that we can visualize. But they are not living there alone. They are not the only organisms in their environment. Pulling out just a little bit more, considering everybody else in there, we have a community. And this is the prairie dog town. And we always have to put the E on the end, because it's the old prairie dog town. So think of all the things that share the environment with prairie dog that's alive. What else lives out there? You tell me. Rattlesnakes. Yes. It's always snakes. Black footed ferret. Right. Say what? Black footed ferret. Oh, ferrets. Oh, that's appropriate. Okay, ferrets. Burrowing owl. There we go. Owls. Okay. Anything that doesn't have a vertebrae? Grasses. Oh, that doesn't have Okay, spiders. Worms. Earthworms, yeah. Coyotes. Hawks. Black tail, jackrabbit, cottontail. <laughs> He's going to give you a scientific name. Jackrabbit. Grasshoppers, crickets. All right. And the hawks line up above the eagle and the prey. Very good. Very good. Okay, so all of these organisms are living together within a system. Here, it's the, the prairie dog town. Now, what if we were to, this is just kind of hypothetical, what if we were to, here's the prairie dog, wipe out prairie dog? What happens to the system? I'll give you an example. I used to <coughs> live in Amarillo in the southwest part of town where it grew. There was a wonderful prey dog. If, if you could go out there and see the black tail, the cotton tail. You had to be careful because it was rattlesnake and, and burrowing owls. And you could just drive and you could sit there with the kids and show them out the window. Of course, development, all gone. But yeah, you, it, it, the, the prairie dog, and getting away from this a little bit, the prairie dog is what's called a keystone species. The keystone species is the foundation of the system. You remove the keystone species, you remove the system. The hatred for the prairie dog in a ranching community is the destruction of the system. The, because the prairie dogs provide food for ferrets, then we now have the, the hatred for the ferret um, in a ranching community. And, and it's, it's to the overall destruction of the entire biotic system. I guess I need the governor here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's a community. Now let's pull out even further and put several communities together and we have an ecosystem. Ecosystem defined as several communities combined. Now, ecologists like to put boundaries around their systems, whether, whether they're tangible or imagined, they like to have some sort of recognized boundary. Our ecosystem has a name. Does anyone know the name of our ecosystem? The prairie grassland? Mm -hmm. That would be our biome. Okay. Break it down a little bit further. There it is. The Flint Hills. So our boundaries are geologic boundaries that are defining the vegetation, which then define what feeds on the vegetation, which then defines what feeds on the herbivores. But it's all, it all starts at the ground. Pull out, like Diane said, pull out just a little bit more. And when I say pull out, I'm, I'm imagining myself as uh, somebody on the moon with a high power telescope, and I'm zooming in on that prairie dog, and I'm pulling out in magnification. So we, we're at the Flint Hills, pulling out just a little bit more. We get to the biome. Biome defined as a broad region with similar climate and vegetation. Broad region.
with similar climate and vegetation. And what are we dying in? The prairie grassland. The prairie grassland. And you're going to see the prairie grassland in the central parts of most large continents because it's going to be the areas within the center of the continent far away from large bodies of water that are going to be dominated by grasslands that can survive, that dominate in those types of regions. Pull out even further, put all of the biomes together and for examples of other biomes, we have the eastern deciduous forest, we have the desert, we have the um, northern coniferous forest, we have the taiga, we have the chaparral. Put all of these biomes together. What do we have? <coughs> we have this. This is the biosphere. The biosphere. Another name for the, not the whole earth, but the portion of the earth that sustains life. Not all of earth sustains life. How much sustains life might surprise you. The biosphere consists of just the very outer edge of the planet. If we were to go from the deepest portions of the water, we could go to the Mariana Trench off the, the coast of the Philippines. Deepest portions of the water to the highest elevations, we could go up to 29,000, what is it, 29,037 feet from Mount Everest. Up above, wherever there's even fungal spores or bacteria cells. Take a tape measure, and you're at the top of Mount Everest, take a tape measure and jump down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. How far have you gone? How long is that tape measure? 14 miles. Very good. Not 14, but close. Usually, my students have said, oh, a thousand miles. 500 miles. 350 miles. It is 12 miles. It's 12 miles. Half the distance from here to Wamiko? They're about right, Charlie? Okay, from here to Flush Road? That is the width, the depth of the shell of life surrounding the earth. That is the biosphere. That's where life is happening. Now, Edward Bass Jr. of the fabled Bass family in Fort Worth decided that he was going to replicate the biosphere in an experiment. And he made Biosphere 2 outside of Tucson, Arizona. Has anybody been to this? Has anybody heard of this before? Yeah. Okay. We need to take a field trip. We need to, the cons of Learjet. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? We could go to the, the Great Barrier Reef and then stop at Pfizer too. We need, I'm going to write a grant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Biosphere 2, outside of Tucson, Arizona, financed by Edward Bass Jr., sought to replicate the biosphere indoors and put in a tropical rainforest, that is the major pyramid, put in a desert, put in a grassland, put in a monoculture, um, had all of the different major biomes of the world enclosed. And uh, this was the, the interesting part. Lock the windows, lock the doors, put, put, I think there was like 12 scientists in there. Lock them in there. They had to subsist off of what was inside. They had, they had, like I said, they had a monoculture and they had some farm animals. Um, how do you think they did? Do you guys know the answer to this? They couldn't get a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their, their oxygen levels started depleting and they got cranky and they started fighting. They were like, they're at the windows, but let me out. And they're breaking the windows and they broke out of there. Um, Turns out the concrete that formed the foundation of the Biosphere 2 was not cured properly. The microbes in the soil uh, were dying. The oxygen was going down. And it, was, it was just a complete failure. And they, you know, people were trying to kill each other. Right now, um, 
like the University of Arizona owns it, or, or maybe it's privately owned, but you can go visit it. It is available for tours. We wouldn't want to stay there. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to stay But it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, you, you won't know without trying, and it took a lot of money, but it was a grand failure. Mm -hmm. off. Well, that's what happens when the system starts breaking down. <laughs> we need to send the governor. <laughs> okay, so ecologists, this is what happens when I walk around, I lose my, there it is. Ecologists first organize their system. They, they look to see who's living in the system, what is the system. The system can be as small as an organism and as large as the biosphere. Uh, here, most of the ecologists are looking at uh, at least the Kanza Prairie system, if not the <coughs> tall grass prairie. But another thing that ecologists look at, the interactions. They love interactions. Interactions between the biotic and the abiotic components of a system. Now this one's easy. <laughs> wow. So the biotic components would be what? What does the word tell you? Life. Life. So the biotic components are? Plants. Yeah. We can, we can put our list together. Bacteria. Fungus. Plants. Protists. If you're not familiar with protists, protists are simple forms of life that are not plants and not bacteria. They're going to be things like algae and protozoans like uh, amoeba and then animals. Those are the biotic components, your basic biotic components. They do not exist within a vacuum, they interact with the abiotic components, which would be, which would mean what? Right. Abiotic components are things that are not alive, but affect life. Obviously, what? Life. Okay. What else? Water. 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 In all of its various permutations. Air. It, yes. We can say we can have water, atmosphere. Rock. How about uh, wind? Does that affect life? Yeah. Temperature. Good grief. We have geologic events like what? Yes. Does that affect life? Moving on the volcano. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Okay, so this is what ecologists are doing. First, they are defining their system. Then they are figuring out what the biotic components are, and then they're looking to see how the biotic components are interacting with the abiotic components. And are the abiotic components changing and therefore affecting the biotic components? Ecology. It, 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 it's a highly advanced, complicated realm of biology. And to be an ecologist, you have to be pretty good at a lot of things. You have to be a generalist. You have to be good at soils. You have to be able to recognize the different types of bacteria. Gee, to be a biologist, you can just be a bacteriologist and just stay in your lab and just stay out of trouble. 